Hey friends, Ash here with Chin Sense. It is a whole new year, 2020. 2019 has already come and gone. And to me, it came and went like that. In today's video, I wanna go over some of the biggest things that happened in 2019, both in YouTube and just in the fragrance world in general. There's a lot of stuff I wanna to talk to you about in this video, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. I'm not gonna spend a huge amount of time talking about each one of these things because there are just so many of them. And with an entire year, there's obviously going to be some things that I forget to mention here or things that I miss. So for anything that you think was super important that happened uh, that I don't talk about here, just leave that in the comments below. So the biggest thing or things that happened in 2019, at least YouTube wise, is going to be all the different fragrance brands that were launched by different YouTubers. Of course, the biggest of the bunch is Fragrance One that was launched by Jeremy Fragrance. He actually did a Kickstarter for his first fragrance, Office for Men, that raised over 700,000 euros. I think the final number was just north of 780,000 euros. So when you put that into US dollars, I think at the time it was about a million bucks. And with that money, he launched Office for Men which was perfumed by Alberto Marias. You had a, a different bottle initially that's changed a couple of times. We're now in the third batch, the third bottle type of Office for Men. But I guess you could say it was a huge success. And after Office for Men has come Date for Men. And now Jeremy Fragrance has announced two more fragrances are coming out here in the near future that are going to be targeted for women. Those aren't the only fragrances or the only brand though, launched by YouTubers this year. You also had Navitus, launched by Red Alessence, Steven. That brand was actually announced and released within the last couple of months. I haven't smelled any of those fragrances. I haven't ordered the uh, sample pack of those yet or any of the bottles, so I can't tell you guys how they smell, whether they're good, bad, or somewhere in between. But there's been a lot of chatter about that brand here lately, especially. Then you had Gravitas, launched by Mr. Smelly. He actually did a Kickstarter for that fragrance as well. That's another one I haven't smelled. Don't have a bottle, don't have a sample, so I can't tell you how good or bad it is. That one, I believe, is supposed to be more of a throwback sort of fragrance, a classic men's fragrance. Then you had Motif Olfactif, which was launched by Mr. Oz. Smaller channel, but really nice guy. And haven't smelled those either. It's like a running theme here. And then last, but certainly not least, is Centauri Perfumes, which I do have one of right here. And that was launched by Peter from the channel Fragrance View. And just FYI, I bought this with no discount, just straight up. What else happened this year? Oh, Mont Blanc Explorer was released. That may not seem like a huge deal uh, to some of you out there anyway, but on Fragrantica, that is listed as the most popular men's release of the year. And why is that a big deal? Why is that worth talking about? Because it's essentially Creed Aventus turned into a designer fragrance. So there have been countless Aventus clones by this point just <laughs> Almost feels like there are hundreds. There are so many out there and yet there was never a designer brand that said We got to get in on that until Explore finally a designer brand said hey guys You know, let's just do it. Let's make our version of Aventus So to an extent it could be a little bit of a watershed moment where you have designer houses taking a cue from a very popular niche fragrance and turning it into a designer style of that DNA. Now, am I saying you're gonna see a lot of that going forward into 2020 or 2021? No, I'm not. But is there a possibility that designer houses are going to take some cues from niche fragrances, very popular niche fragrances, and then try to retool it, release it, so that they can make money themselves off that DNA? Yeah, I think we may end up seeing some of that. So who knows, maybe Baccarat Rouge 540 Designer Edition coming your way in 2020. Another thing that happened this year, and this is not fragrance related in the sense that it pertains to a fragrance itself, uh, but a YouTuber passed away, My Mickers. Lots of you out there are aware of My Mickers. He was actually a winner of Robes 08's 
uh, fragrance YouTuber competition. I forget, Fragrance Idol. So he's been in the YouTube game for years. He's always a very positive guy. If you've not seen his channel, it's just my Mickers. You can type that in on YouTube. It'll take you right to it. But he was always a really positive guy, really stood up for what he believed in, what he enjoyed fragrance wise. And that came as a huge shock. And if we're going to recap what happened in 2019, you can't really do that without mentioning Mickers. I wasn't great friends with him. I spoke with him a handful of times, but he was always pleasant. And uh, it was a real, like I said, a real shock when he passed away. So a shout out to Mickers, rest in peace. And talking about another YouTuber who's been around for a long time, uh, Drakdoc actually this year announced he was taking a hiatus. So he's no longer making fragrance videos, at least as of this video, it's been six months since his last upload. He left it open-ended that he may come back in the future, but as of now, there's uh, no telling when that will be. And from talking about YouTubers and what happened with YouTubers, we're gonna go into fragrances. Again, since I already talked about Explore, technically. I've talked about this a couple of times here recently, but D Squared actually discontinued every single fragrance that they make. Now, D Squared is still making fragrances. It's just they started over. They essentially hit the reset button. So as of right now, there's D Squared Wood, and very soon there's going to be D Squared Greenwood. But as far as men's fragrances go, that's all they've got right now. And then there is Commodity. Yeah, Commodity fragrances. They went out of business. These fragrances, ever seen them? This one is Whiskey. I've got, uh, I think, five Commodity fragrances. They used to be at Sephora's all across America, and for a while, they were one of the biggest up-and-coming niche brands. They were fairly affordable, they were easy to get, and they were getting a little bit of hype, at least as far as mainstream media goes, mainstream magazines, things like that. And yet this year, commodity out of business. After it was announced they were going out of business, these started popping up at TJ Maxx, Ross, and Marshall stores all across America, and uh, popping up at discounters on eBay. They were selling bottles for 50 bucks. And that is unfortunate that they went out of business. They had kind of a cool idea where each one of their fragrances was based off of a thing, like this one is whiskey, and then they also had like gold and a book. They had a lot of different fragrances, and now they are no more. And talking about discontinuations and things going out of business, Guerlain, Lome Ideal Cologne discontinued and replaced by Guerlain L'Homme Ideal Cool. And the only reason I bring that up is to say once again for probably the fifth or sixth time on this channel, I think Cologne is better than Cool. So Guerlain has discontinued a fragrance and replaced it with something that's not as good as the fragrance they discontinued. At least, in my opinion, you might have a different opinion. In 2019, we also got a new Spice Bomb for the first time since 2015 and everybody was very excited about that. Everyone was very pumped. Wow, a new Spice Bomb. It's been a while. I wonder what it's gonna smell like. I'm sure it's gonna be awesome. And then Spice Bomb Night Vision came out. Now, I'm not gonna say that it smells horrible or anything like that, uh, but to say that the fragrance community was disappointed is probably putting it lightly. It's that type of fragrance that tries to capture the attention of younger guys out there with kind of a bubblegummy, sweet type scent. And we also got a new Amen fragrance from Mugler. Yeah, so Amen skipped 2018. We had Crypto Mint in 2017, nothing in 2018, but Alien Men came out. And so people were thinking, oh, I wonder if they're just not gonna do the Amen line for a while and just focus on Alien Man. And it seemed like they might because Alien Man Fusion came out in 2019 also, but then Amen Ultimate was announced. And for some people, that was also a letdown because with the Amen line, so many of those fragrances are pure whatever. So pure malt, pure Havan, pure coffee, pure leather, pure energy. You have all those fragrances that are centered around an idea or a theme. And that was what people were expecting with the next Amen. What would it be? What would it be? You had Ultra Zest, you had Crypto Mint, all these different fragrances, all these different ideas that had been done. What would the new one be? And then it was just Amen Ultimate. <laughs> and uh, again, some people were let down. It does have a nice mochaccino note to it, but it's not quite on the level of some of those heavy hitters that were in the Amen line. This was also a year of flankers. To me, it almost seemed like flankers outnumbered original releases, at least 
in the designer realm, uh, like three to one, at least that's how it seemed. And yet, my favorite release of the year was a flanker, and not even a particularly unique or new flanker, uh, Code Absolute by Armani, which actually shares similarities to Code Ultimate and Code Profumo. And really, it shouldn't be much of a surprise that it shares similarities to Code Ultimate because, I mean, check this out. Code Absolute, Code Ultimate. The colors are the same, just reversed. Yeah, so not really being super subtle about that. Either way, I do love this fragrance. I think it's great, but 2019 almost could be called the year of the flanker. And I don't think that's gonna change. I think every year from here on, at least for the foreseeable future, is going to be the year of the flanker. Then you had Raja Parfums releasing the Parfum Cologne line. So that's Scandal, Danger, Creation E slash Enigma, and Vetiver. Parfum Cologne. Those follow up the success of Elysium, and that is kind of a step forward for Raja Parfums in becoming a more accessible niche brand. Those fragrances open the door even more for Raja Parfums to have fragrances that are a little bit lower in price and yet still exclusive to own. And then with Hermes, you had a passing of the torch as far as the Jardin line is concerned. Jean-Claude Elena passed the torch on to Christine Nagel. And the first fragrance released in that line by somebody other than Jean-Claude Elena took place this year with Un Jardin Sur La Lagoon. Some people were very excited to see what would happen with that fragrance. Other people not so much. And that is reflected on Fragrantica.com. If you go there and look that fragrance up, you'll see a smattering of everything, a whole lot of dislikes, a whole lot of loves, and a lot of likes as well. But it was a passing of the torch at Hermes this year. And then some uh, fragrances that got people a little bit riled up <laughs> that were reviewed on YouTube. And those two fragrances that I'm talking about are Vanilla Vibes by Juliet Has a Gun and Instant Crush by Mancera. So both of those fragrances were sent out to what seemed to be every single fragrance reviewer on YouTube at the same time. And what happened? A whole bunch of reviews on those fragrances that all came out at the exact same time. And with both of those releases, you had a lot of backlash. People really, really kind of raged against that. They raged against the machine. And to an extent, that kind of makes me take a step back and reevaluate how I accept fragrances for review. If it's something that's going to be sent out to 20 or 25 people, do I really want to cover it? Because at that point, uh, it's a little bit overdone. And I think that's something that uh, everybody on YouTube in general is struggling with a little bit. And just in case anybody wants my thoughts, I don't like Vanilla Vibes really. I think it's not that good. And then uh, Instant Crush is a pretty nice fragrance. I do like that one. Then we also had Dior following Chanel's footsteps yet again with Dior Sauvage Parfum, where they took a look at what Chanel was doing with Blue de Chanel and they said, yeah, let's do that. And it's been like that, Blue de Chanel and Sauvage intertwined since Sauvage came out. You had Blue de Chanel Eau de Toilette, Sauvage Eau de Toilette. Then Chanel came out with Blue de Chanel Eau de Parfum. Dior came out with a Sauvage Eau de Parfum. Blue de Chanel Parfum and then Sauvage Parfum. So if in 2020 we see Blue de Chanel Intense, Blue de Chanel Absolute, or Blue de Chanel Cologne, I'm sure that not long after that we'll see Sauvage Intense, Sauvage Absolute, or Sauvage Cologne. As well this year, we saw Christopher Chong leave Amouage as creative director. He'd been there for 12 years and stepped down earlier in 2019. Most of you out there are going to be aware of Amouage. It's a huge niche fragrance house, very, very popular. They have lots of fantastic releases. And Christopher Chong was the creative director behind everything from Jubilation 25 on. They do have a new CEO. I don't know that they have a, a new creative director installed as of right now. If you know that they do, then leave that below. I know about the CEO, but I'm not sure about the creative director. And that was a huge story this year, Christopher Chong stepping down, considering some of the fragrances he masterminded. And I guess the last thing that I'll talk about here as we head into 2020 is Dior Homme 2020. And I've actually seen a photo of Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense, both in a new bottle style. I don't know if they're changing up Dior Homme Intense also, 
If anybody knows that, let me know. Uh, it could be they just have the new bottle design for Dior Homme Intense so that everything matches up in the Dior Homme line. If they change Dior Homme Intense though, whew, people are gonna get upset. And people are already upset about Dior Homme 2020. It has removed pretty much every note that would make you think about Dior Homme. So the fragrance that so many people out there have loved is changed now forever. And it may be a good idea if you love Dior Homme the way that it has been known up until this 2020 version to pick up a couple bottles just in case. And this is something I've talked about to people in private for a little bit and that's Christian Dior kind of going off on a different path. They're going for more mainstream stuff at the moment for lack of better terminology. With Dior Sauvage when that came out and made them so much money I think they decided let's do stuff like that. So I don't anticipate, and I could be wrong, hopefully I am wrong, but I don't anticipate Dior doing too many new groundbreaking fragrances in the near term. It seems like to me they're more interested in trying to cash in and make as much money as humanly possible. So they have these fragrances from the past that are so iconic and people will automatically associate Dior with that, like when Fahrenheit first came out when Dior Homme and Dior Homme Intense first came out, when Eau Sauvage was released, Eau Sauvage Parfum, uh, that people will, will think Christian Dior and think about those fragrances and go, Dior is, they're up here. You know, they're the top tier. And even with their, their private line, a lot of the fragrances that were first in that line, those are the best ones. <laughs> the ones that are discontinued or being kind of phased out. All of the new releases, at least the ones that I've smelled, and a Dior's private line, not very impressive to me. I mean, you might have one or two that smell pretty nice, but it's a lot of effervescent floral type stuff that is pretty forgettable, at least compared to what they had in the past. So it'll be interesting to see where Dior goes from here. And we're starting off 2020 with Dior Homme 2020, which early uh, reviews on that are mixed at best. All right, guys, that's it for 2019 in review. I know it was a long video. I apologize for that, but there was a lot to cover. As always, guys, thanks so much for all your support, and I'll see you guys again tomorrow with another fragrance video.